Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. Now, I was talking to Josh from Origamics about how it's really cool that you can fold almost seemingly infinite different number of unique paper airplane designs starting from the same sheet of paper. And there's actually a quote about that uh, from, I'm totally going to butcher his name. I think it's Tor Udall. He says, when you start tearing or cutting the paper, it means that you've stopped believing in the infinite possibilities of a rectangle. And I think that's a really cool way of, of capturing the fact that in origami, you can really make an incredible number of shapes just starting with a single square or a single rectangular sheet of paper. And so we were talking about how do we capture that and show that to our audience. And so we've decided to each design a paper airplane starting from the same origami base. So both of these planes start from the water bomb base in origami, and you'll see in a minute how to fold that. And Josh designed the Stingray, and I designed the Stinger. And you can see we, uh, we did not cooperate well on the naming of our planes. We both kind of just presented them to one another and ironically have very similar names. But they fly very differently, and they, as you can tell, look very different. And these actually start with the same several folds. Now, Josh makes a ton of awesome origami content a lot of paper airplane stuff. So be sure to head over to his channel by clicking the card in the top right corner and check out what he does over there. Now in this video, I will be teaching you how to fold the stinger. So uh, without further ado, let's see how that flies. Now all you'll need in order to fold Stinger is an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. And I have here some 24 pound Astrobrites, but I recommend you actually use something a little bit thinner like 20 pound copy paper because some of the parts of the plane get a little thick. And so using thicker paper will add some challenge to that. Now I'm just using this because I think colored paper shows up better on camera than white paper does. Now, as we kind of discussed before, this plane begins with the water bomb base. So we'll start by folding this right edge to the left edge. And this fold isn't actually a necessary element in the water bomb base, but it's an easy one to get out of the way as we begin. And once I fold that, I'll open it back up and actually flip the paper over. Next, we want to take this top edge and fold it to our left edge here. And we should form a crease that goes right through this top left corner diagonally downward. Now take your time on this step. I know it's a bit of a challenge to get your crease to go right through that corner, but the more accurate you are, the better your plane will be in the end because every time you make a fold that references this crease, if this crease is wrong, that next fold is going to be wrong. So being accurate in the beginning is especially important. So once we've done that, we'll open it up and fold the other side. So taking this top edge to the right edge. And again, we want that crease to go right through the top corner. And we can open that up and flip the paper over. And next we want to make a crease that goes right through this intersection of diagonal creases. So we'll take this top edge and fold it down. And we want to use these diagonal creases on this side of the paper as our reference. And we kind of just pull it down until we see the intersection of those and this is forming a big triangle. And once we've got that, we'll just tack it using our finger and make sure you line up this part of the center crease with the center crease below it. And once you've achieved that, you can crease right across the top. Just like so. And now we'll open that up, flip the paper over once more, and you just poke this point right here, and you can see those edges pull upward a little bit. And now you can pull in on those and 
arrive at something like this. Okay, so that is the water bomb base. The next step is to flip this right flap over to the other side and to fold this point here to the top center point. And we'll unfold that and now fold this point here to our center point here. And we'll go ahead and just throw that to the other side. And we'll do the same thing here. Pushing this flap to the right, folding up to the top point. Opening that up and now folding this point to the center point. And we'll open this up like so. The next step is I want to fold this diagonal crease right here so that it lands on this center crease here. And so I'll show you what that looks like. We'll pull it across and you can see what was this crease here, that crease right there, I'm going to line up on that center crease. And so it should intersect right here at this point and on this vertical center line. And once I've done that, I will just fold back across the center as it naturally wants to. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side, taking this crease here and landing it on the center. And folding back in the other direction. And then I will actually go ahead and fold on the existing creases here as well. So at this point in time, your plane should look like this. The next step is to fold this short edge here into the center. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And you can open that back up. And now we're going to turn the paper over. But first I want to show you this intersection here between this crease and this layer will be an important point that we reference in this next step. So I'm going to flip it over and begin to pull this whole section down. And you can see if I'm pulling from this top point, it almost naturally wants to begin opening and performing a petal fold. Now I want to pull this down so that the crease I make goes right through this intersection that we were talking about between this layer and this layer here. And as I do so, I can collapse the plane into this shape. Now I'm going to show you how to fold the plane as if you are not using the template. And if you are using the template, I'm going to leave a timestamp in the top right corner that shows you what time to skip to to fold it the way you should fold it if you're using the template. If you're not using the template, follow along here. So I want to pull this edge in so that it lands on the center crease. Now to do that, I have to open this pocket here and pull this all the way until it lands on the center crease. And I can crease it like so. And now I'll do the same thing on the other side. So I open this pocket slightly, I pull this all the way in so that edge is landing on the center crease. And I crease it all the way down. And so now our plane should look like this. I'm going to flip it over 
and I'm going to swing this right flat to the left and fold this edge here to center. So your plane should look like this. And the next step is to actually swing this whole thing and we want to tuck this layer here, the portion past this crease, so that right there, into this pocket. And this is partly challenging based on how thick your paper is. And what I do is I curl this a little bit. You can see I'm curling that portion of the paper to prepare it to tuck into that pocket. Okay, and it should look like that. So now we want to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to push it to the right, fold this edge here to center. And now I'm going to curl that layer, preparing it to tuck into the pocket. So your plane should now look roughly like this. And the next step is just to fold the wings. So I want to fold this in half like so. And our wing crease will begin at the nose right here. And we'll go up through the body of the plane. Now there's no specific angle for folding this but your wings should go well past this bottom crease here. So see that I make sure my crease is beginning right at this point in the front. I want that to be a nice sharp point. And you can see about where mine has ended in the back. So something similar to this will yield you with good wings. So I will flip it over and fold the other wing to match, which can definitely be a bit challenging when you're using thick paper. And even with thin paper, this stuff's a little challenging. And I will open it up like so. So your plane should look like this. Now, uh, all I have left to do really is to fold winglets on either side. And so I'm going to lay the plane upside down like this. And this represents how the plane will sit when it is flying and out of my hand, which is good because now I can try to fold winglets parallel to the center crease. And they don't have to be very big. These are just to give some directional stability. And I'm just estimating here what is parallel. And once I've done one, I can fold my wings like so and flip it over to match it on the other side. This is assuming that your plane is uh, symmetrical. And there we have our winglets. I can open up the wings of the plane. And now just the last thing to do here is I can kind of slide my finger in between these two points and now you can really see where this plane gets its name, Stinger. Kind of looks like it's got snake fangs or something up front that are venomous. And so there you go, this is a finished Stinger. Now I will proceed to show you how to fold it if you are using the template so that the template ends up correctly folded. Okay, so if you are watching this, you are folding this plane using the template, or you're just curious about what it looks like if you do. And once you're at this point, now we flip the paper over, and we want to fold this edge here into the center by opening this pocket and pulling it all the way in like so. 
and then creasing all the way down. And if you folded through the first way, you'll notice that really the only difference here is we flipped the plane over and we're folding our uh, leading edges of our wings in the opposite direction so that this is going to be the bottom of the plane. So now I'm going to take this top edge and fold it into center just like I did on the other side. And to do that I have to open this pocket and pull in like so. And crease all the way down. And next you can see I have this kind of two triangles that form a square at the top of the plane. I want to flip one to the opposite side and fold this edge here into our center crease here. And after doing that, I kind of want to curl this edge you can see what it looks like. I want to curl this edge so that it can now swing and we're going to tuck it into this pocket right here. This is one of those steps that gets harder the thicker your paper is. But there it should do it just like that. And now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Swing it to the right, fold into the center, And having accomplished that, we want to curl this edge. And now I'm going to tuck it into that pocket right here. And the plane should look like this. So now we just want to fold the wings and I'll fold the plane in half like so, so the side we were just working on is in the bottom. And we want to fold our wings so that they start here at the nose and slant upward slightly and hit maybe back here. And this is quite thick, so finagling it's hard. I grab the wing right here at this junction between the two layers and kind of fight and bend it there because that's where the thickest layers are and where it's most likely to fight you. And once you've accomplished that, you can see kind of the slope of my crease. Once you've accomplished that, you can flip the plane over and fold your next wing to match. Again, trying to go right through that point at the nose of your plane. Jeez, I'm wrinkling this pretty badly. And folding down like so. And your plane should look like this at this point. And next we just want to fold some winglets. So we'll lay it upside down like this. And we want to fold our winglets parallel to this center crease. And these are going to be pretty small. You're just estimating what is parallel to that center crease. And once you've folded one, you can position your wings like this and kind of book match them and fold the other one to match. And there you have it, a finished stinger. Now you can see in comparison to the uh, one that is folded not intended for the template, the top of this one I think doesn't look quite as clean. It kind of gets wrinkly in comparison to this one. But the nice thing is this will work with a template because this portion, this portion, and this portion are all the same side of the paper, which means you can print all the way along that, whereas you can't do that on this one. So there you go, two versions of stinger. See which one you like best and make them compete against one another. 
Now, if you're interested in more of my content, be sure to subscribe by clicking on that channel icon in the top right corner and check out some more of my videos here. If you really like what I do, head over to foldableflight.com or patreon.com foldableflight where you can get the templates for all of my planes. Thanks for watching, guys.